start with the date? Uh, your name, the date. Uh, oh, my name? They never yeah. asked for my name before. Yeah, they want the name of the interviewer, and then you may introduce the... Okay, but the Cynthia therapy. Ettinger and Sally Waters. So I wasn't... No. I'm Cheryl Moser, and today is Monday, October 18th, 2004. What are your full names? My name is Susie Bookbinder Ettinger. My name is Sally Bookbinder Waters. Was it your parents who came to the, did your parents come to the United States or was it your grandparents who came to the United States? Our mother came to the United States when she was a year old. She was the youngest of five. Our father was born here in Milwaukee on Jefferson Street. And he was one of eight, he was the only boy. And mother was one of five, and she was the youngest of the five when they came over. And where did your mother come over from? Kiev, Russia. Um, does your family name, Bookbinder, have some kind of special meaning? No. <laughs> when you mean special um, meaning, of what kind of meaning do you mean? Um, was it changed? Well. Oh. We have no idea. The history of it. We didn't know very no. much about that particular part of the family. And our father's father was deceased before our parents were married. When and where were you born? Well, wait, we should talk about the Bogus family. Oh, though. well, but that's mother's maiden name. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, you can tell us. Okay. Well, my mother was born in Russia, one of five. She, came, she was a year old when she came over. And she is from Kiev, Kiev Russia. Russia, and her family settled here in Milwaukee. And um, uh, he, he was, he, what did he do? He was a, pe well not a peddler, he was more no. scrap, scrap metal and so forth. Mm -hmm. And do you know if their name was changed when they came? Bogus was changed. That I think when they were in Russia, it was like Bogoslovsky, and it was then shortened to Bogus when they came over. Our grandfather arrived first, tried Racine, did not like it, and ended up back in Milwaukee. Now, when and where were you born? Born in Milwaukee on July 29th, 1937, at Mount Sinai Hospital. Do you know when your mother's family came over, what brought them to the United States? Um, I believe they wanted to get out of Russia and they had other friends who had settled in Wisconsin and therefore they were able to get passage, secure passage to get out of Russia. And you said when your mother's family came over, your father, or your the great grandfather would have been in scrap battles. Do you know grandfather? Grandfather. grandfather. Yeah, grandfather. Um, your grandfather on your father's side. Do you he, know how he oh, made a living? Yes, definitely. He was a woman's tailor, and he. His name was Sigmund Bookbinder. Right. B U C H R B O O K. And he was well renowned in the field of clothing, making clothing, and one of his customers was Edna Ferber. And he was mentioned in um, her book so big and she made I think he made her riding clothes if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and then he went into real estate and other um, business your mother was born in Russia your father was born in Milwaukee how did they make a living how did our parents make a living mm -hmm. oh our father was an attorney okay. and our mother went back into nursing after we were in high school. But she graduated she from... She was a graduate of Mount Sinai Hospital School of Nursing. What was it like growing up in Milwaukee? Well, it was only positive for us. We had wonderful experiences, and we were very fortunate to live in the community where everybody cared about everyone. Yeah, we loved it. What do you remember most? Everything was positive. There were no bad things. We were, we were unfortunately at that was the era where nothing was told to us that was bad. It was always great, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. What kind of neighborhood did you grow up in? You can tell. In Whitefish Bay, and, and um, with lots of friends, and uh, it was a happy time always. Was Whitefish Bay a Jewish neighborhood at the time? Mm. 
Well, there were many children. More than yes. it is now. Yeah, I think so, too. And we really had wonderful friends, but a lot of our friends were not just Jewish. Right. We had a multitude of friends. And we were involved in, in school activities and, and in the community. In the community, right. Mm -hmm. Did your family belong to a synagogue? Yes, Temple Emmanuel. Our father's father was one of the co founders of Temple Emmanuel. Was going to synagogue important in your family life? Not really, not oh. overly important, well, but we important. Went, we did go to Sunday school. We were confirmed. We confirmed in junior con, and it was important to, but not, um, over, you know, it wasn't the most important thing in the world. Were you happy to be Jewish? Oh, definitely. Just, yes, very happy to be Jewish, but we loved having friends of every denomination, even Jew, our friends were our friends, no matter what religion they were. You mentioned that you went to your congregational Sunday school. Um, do you, is there more to your Jewish educational background? Mm, outside of, you mean? Outside of Sunday school? No, at that time, well, we were involved in uh, groups, councilettes, our mother was one of the sponsors. We were never in BBG, but no. we were part of councilettes which is part of the National Council of Jewish Women. In what ways was your family a traditional Jewish family? Well, we celebrated the holidays, but because our father was German Jewish and our mother Russian Jewish, we celebrated other holidays as well. It was a very open household, wouldn't you say that? Correct, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any Jewish tra family traditions that you that are special or that you have a memory of? Celebrating the holidays. Usually our mother had it. Yeah. Basically speaking, Passover and Hanukkah. Yeah, it was basically at our house. We did most of it at our house. Um, you describe your youth as very happy. Were you aware of any anti-Semitism? Absolutely no. never, never. No, I can't, never. Mm -mm. What, can you tell me a little bit about your um, past and current about involvement of agencies in the Jewish community? Why don't you go first then? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go first. Uh, I'm very involved in the Jewish community. Um, uh, I'm past president of several organizations. I'm on, chair, you know, uh, on boards of many organizations in the Jewish community. Can you be more specific as to? I'm past president of the Wisconsin Society for Jewish Learning. I'm a past co-president of the Mount Sinai Auxiliary Women's Division. I sit on the board of Jewish Family Service, the Jewish Home, you name it, I'm involved in it. But I'm not, I'm a hands-on, I don't believe in being the American Jewish Committee. I don't believe in, in sitting on a board unless I did work for them. Is the Wisconsin Society for Jewish Learning a predecessor to the coalition? No, it has nothing to do with it. Two separate entities. It was co-founded by my late husband's family in 1955 when a chair, money was raised for a chair to oh, really start the program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the Hebrew and Semitic Department in 1955. My, my in-laws were very involved, my husband was involved, I then became involved, my son, my late son was involved, so it's been something that's been part of our family. Mm -hmm. Well, I was involved with the, um, the Women's Welfare Board, Consulates, um, Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai Hospital as a volunteer, and I don't think like that was basically it because I worked and I was not as involved as my as Susie was. How do you see the present and future of the Milwaukee Jewish community? Well, because I sit in so many meetings and I listen to discussions about this, I hope it can survive. It's sh it's shrinking in numbers, and we can only hope that the next generation will become more involved and find it to be something that's a basic necessity of their life, but due to the fact that they're working families, we find that the numbers are 
definitely decreasing, which is very sad. I'm not as involved in things as she is. And it's not necessarily an involvement. It's no, on what I think. I think the same thing she's thinking. How do you connect to Israel? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving on Sunday. I'm going to Israel on my second trip over. I'm going with Congregation Shalom. We are now members. And I'm traveling with the rabbi and his wife and looking forward to it. And we support Israel through Federation and so forth. I, th I think it's wonderful. I have no commitment to it at all. Are there any lessons in life that you've learned that has helped carry you through? Oh, gosh, yes. Have a positive attitude exactly. and keep going. And that's the, the best yeah. advice you could give anybody. There are good days, there are bad days, we've had tragedies, we've had happiness, and you just have to keep going, you can't give up. No. What are you most proud of? I think I'm very proud of the fact that I am um, able to be involved in the com community philanthropically as well as hands-on, and I think it's an important factor and part of my life. What, um, just life in general, uh, probably keeping going with a dis disability that I have, and uh, keep moving along. That's, that's never give up. And never give up. Mm -hmm. Do you have any regrets? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I regret that my son is deceased, um, but life goes on and we have to remember him and do really give him perpetuity to the community and his name so it will never be forgotten. I just hope that I keep going on and no regrets. At all. What, how would you describe the happiest moment of your life? You can go first. You get being married, taking care of a house and a husband, and moving on. I think those are the happiest times. I feel the same way, and I was fortunate to have a son and a wonderful husband, and only sorry that they both died so young. Which leads me to the next mm -hmm. question as to what's the saddest? The death of my husband and my son. The death of my husband and our parents. And our and parents, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something about yourself that nobody knows that's interesting and that you'd like to share with us? No, I don't think there's, I think <laughs> we're, we're open people. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything that would be hidden from anybody. I think they all know us quite well. And we are the same way. We're very open about our, our life and our lifestyle. How would you like to be remembered? Uh, for, for partaking in activities and being part of the community and being able to give. And for being classified as nice people and um, giving and caring and um, more caring mm -hmm. of other people. I feel that there's more for us to talk about. Um, what else can you share with me about who you are or what life in Milwaukee was like growing up and how it's different now? Well, we grew up in a great time. I mean, we, we were very fortunate. We were in high school in the 50s. Sally and I were professional models for many, many years in the community. And therefore, we had involvements with pay many people throughout the community. We were very lucky. Right, and then went on into the theater. We were in part of the theater, and then I was in radio and television and worked in public relations. I worked, fortunately, for Ben Barkin and did volunteer work after I quit for 30 years, worked on the circus parade. I'm very proud of the fact that I recently um, presented the art museum with the Chihuly chandelier and hope to do much more before our time is over. Sally? Well, just being involved in the community, and my husband and I had a store, and we were in, in the um, fashion industry for many years, and um, just life in general was good, and we kept going on and on and on. 
Can you tell me a little more about your store? Um, it was a lady fashion store that was very well known. And um, many people love to come in there. My husband had a great reputation. And everybody loved him. And unfortunately, he died too young, too. And uh, he gave of himself as well as, as everybody else. So what was the name of the store? Ladies Haberdashery in Sherwood. And did you work there also? I did. And before that, we were connected to Harley's, which was a men's and women's store in Sherwood. Um, everybody knew my husband, Foxy Waters. As models and being involved in the theater, what kind of experiences oh. did you have? We were very fortunate. It was really great. We were affiliated with the Fred Miller Theater, which is now the Milwaukee Repertory. In fact, we were just involved in the 50th anniversary of the Repertory Theater. We worked with such notables as Eva Legallion, Edward Everett Horton, Ethel Waters. Ethel Waters. We were very lucky. And in our modeling, we were very fortunate in working basically in Milwaukee, Chicago. We were, because we were identical twins, we represented t Pittsburgh Plate Glass Twin Dow and Tony. Yeah, and Lawrence Corporation. Lawrence Corporation, and we also were involved in Junior House for many years. Right, and all the manufacturers in and around the community. Um, what was your favorite production that you were involved uh, in? Member of the Wedding? Yeah, with Ethel Waters. I think that was one of the, that was the, really the most outstanding. She was such a wonderful lady. She, I don't know if you know who she was. Okay, she she was African American and she was the originator and original cast member of a play called Member of the Wedding. She and she had the lead and she did it here in Milwaukee. And she before that she was a jazz singer and she in the twenties and thirties and she had a wonderful reputation. And um, she, she just was so warm and endearing and brought members of the cast to Milwaukee that all, so many of them became our friends from the Fred Miller Theater. And it was an exciting time, it was most definitely. Mm -hmm. Were there many Jewish people involved in the theater? There yes. Were, yes. Dori Shortek was one of the co-founders. And to this day, we see her. She was here with me the other day working. And we just were very fortunate. And there were a lot of young married women at that oh, time definitely. taking courses. Jewish women. Jewish women. Mm -hmm. Hard time. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Lots of them. We were very lucky. And you said they were taking classes, so it, it was, was a school. There was a school connected with the theater, and they were ta taking classes. We took a two-year course, and got to meet all these interesting people. And they would come in and take one or two of the courses, and did it for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um. Your donation to the art museum, the yes. Chikuli Chandelier. Um, how did you find it? Well, I know the motivation is, behind yeah, it, but can you share? Motivation. Well, we, we wanted to do something in memory of my son, who was an art collector as well as our, we are collectors. And fortunately, I kept saying I wanted to do something memorable, but didn't realize how memorable. And through connections of my attorney and the late Mr. Pelisek, who was president of the art museum, who had a special contact with Dale Chihuly, who went to Madison and was studied under Harvey Littleton, he made the connection for me. Uh, we never thought we'd get it, but fortunately with our story, he released it, I purchased it, gave it back to the museum, and it's standing in the lobby of the art museum, and I feel blessed that it's there. The best part are the comments from people all over the country who have written, who have called, strangers, who are so grateful that we have this in Milwaukee. And I'm thrilled that I could do it. I wish my son did it, but I'm doing it for him. We've made a lot of mention mm -hmm. about your son. Can we mention his mm -hmm. name also? Sam for Joseph Edinger. What other, or are there any other, I find um, the stories about the theater mm -hmm. 
and are there any other stories that I haven't pulled out? Well, I had some marvelous experiences working in radio and television. I worked for WISM radio and TV, and um, it was really an exciting job. First of all, I was in the, on the radio side, and I worked with the um, disc jockeys and really um, did the programming of music for many years at WISM. And, um, I would call Sally and say, please get a group down here, Kennedy's coming in. Oh, there were so many people who would come through Milwaukee for interviews and we'd need live audiences. Remember with Henry Cabot Lodge, I called and said, please mm -hmm. find some of our friends, get down here immediately, we needed an audience. So I was very lucky. And then I was lucky because I worked for Ben Barkin, who I adored. And I was a paid worker for three years and a volunteer for 30 and met people from all over the world, worked on great programs and projects, and I'm proud that I had that experience working with him. He was a joy. And I got to meet many of the designers of the, uh, the 60s, 70s, 80s, not until the 90s that my husband worked with that were very well known and got to know them and um, uh, on a different, differently than just being in the market. And um, it was a wonderful time. We had a good time with it all. It really was. Tell me a little bit about being sisters and having shared your life in Milwaukee and that you're able to continue to share it, which I think is spectacular. Well, we're identical twins, so we were very fortunate. There were six sets of twins in our class at Whitefish Bay High School. We are now working on our 50th high school reunion. I am sharing it for next September. We were very lucky being twins. We had companionship, but we would never do anything without a third party along because we always said it was like being with one person. So we made a point of that. We never did anything without a third person. We grateful to have each other. We live together now because we're both alone. And um, we collect art and travel and um, do the things that we enjoy. What has been one of your more memorable trips together? Oh, we've done many, but taking, I think, going to Europe with yeah. you. Uh -huh. And we've traveled extensively, and we're lucky we can do it. We're still doing it. Is there anything else that we should talk about that we haven't got into? I don't think so. Do you? No, just that we had wonderful parents. We did. We had fabulous parents. As we said, Mother was a graduate of Mount Sinai. Our father was an attorney. And we were very blessed to have such a caring, lovely family and extended families and extended friends as well. We're very lucky. I agree, and so many friends. And um, we've lost most of the family, but we have our extended friends who are fabulous, just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we're glad we have them. We certainly are. We're happy we lived in Milwaukee, even though the weather could be better. And we have wonderful, some very wonderful relatives, too, mm -hmm. that have stood by us through our ups and downs. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to discuss a little bit about my husband, my late husband, who tragically died at the age of 44. His name was Alan Ettinger, and his family co-founded Master Lot Corporation. He was born and raised in Pennsylvania, returned to Milwaukee to become active in the company. Uh, he and the Berkowitz family, my mother-in-law's family, then broke away and found and the Stahl family broke away and founded their own lock company called Lock Corporation of America, and it was in existence until 19 in the I think the late 80s. My son grew up in Milwaukee, attended university school in Temple Emanuel. He was from Mitzvah. Uh, he went on to college to American University and law school in Maryland, and came back to do philanthropic work here. He was involved with the Jewish home, working on a master's degree, and tragically passed away. But um, because of the situation, we we are definitely leaving legacies to the community in their memory, which is very important. And I feel that this is part of our life to do this, to to um, carry it on, carry the name on forever and ever. What do you think? I, I agree with that. And my husband was John. Waters called Frosty. Everybody called him Frosty. And he was a concert pianist who graduated from Northwestern University 
and went into the clothing business and eventually into our own store and had a wonderful reputation for fashion, for designing, for architecture, for anything creative. And unfortunately, he too died young. So. Can you share a little bit about the young married life that you had um, with your husband and what oh, it was like? Definitely. I was, we were older when we got married. I mean, I was close to 30, he was 34. We worked, my husband was part of the Young Leadership and we would travel around the country for the Federation as part of Young Leadership. And he was involved in other philanthropic activities in and around the city of Milwaukee, but would, would extend it out east as well to family in the Pennsylvania area. And uh, it's, it's sad because he had so much to give and, and lost his life at a very young age, 44 years of age. So therefore he, um, he couldn't do as much and I've tried to carry on these legacies in, in philanthropy without him. And we're gonna spread it as far as we can. I run a foundation, the Edinger Family Foundation. I'm proud of it. And um, we try to be, you know, not just Jewish agencies, we're giving it to other agencies as well, which is very important. And I work with people who are, I'm surrounded by people who are very intelligent and work with me, but it's basically my decision as to where it's going. And I think this is so important. If you can do it, help others, they need it. And we're, we're proud that we can do it. My late mother-in-law was one of the most philanthropic Jewish women to the Jewish Federation, extremely involved. She came back to Milwaukee as a, in, her, in the late 50s when her husband became an officer of Master Lock, and she continued to give until the day she died. And can you say her name? Her name was Anita Ettinger, and our parents were Nina Book, Bogus Bookbinder and James Bookbinder. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share a little bit about? Well, my, we were very in, in, involved with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra as young people. And the UWM Orchestra? The UWM, yeah for the music department and all sorts of creative things. We were doing something, always involved in something and enjoyed doing it until we couldn't any longer. How did you meet your husband? I met my husband at Harley. He was working there and I started working there. And we were married at St. Robert's Church because my husband was Catholic and our wedding was there and uh, we had a wonderful life. We really did. And everybody loved him and wanted to be part of our lives and um, enjoy his company and everything that he could get because he was so creative and everybody wanted part of Frosting. So doing symphony balls and Mount Sinai balls and doing all the things that he could do and he did everything very well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we participated in a lot of activities throughout the years, and um, I've continued doing it in their names, and I think it's important to be able to do that. How did you meet your husband? I met my husband, well, I, it was uh, in a rain, somebody had fixed me up with him, and I started dating him, never realized it was going to mount to anything, and it did, and we were lucky, we had 10 years, and he died just before our 10th wedding anniversary. In the legacies that you'd like to leave behind, mm -hmm. um, is there any way you can, because legacies are something that you can almost see and touch, mm -hmm. but is there some way you can verbalize um, how you wish, I know you shared how you wish to be remembered, but mm -hmm. a little more on the legacies that you Well, have. legacies, we are very fortunate to have objects and uh, that are, are valuable and at this present time we're trying to make some decisions as to where these will be left. We are art collectors, we have um, some very fine pieces and we're meeting with uh, curators from different museums pertaining to these issues due to the fact that we have no heirs to leave our things to. So therefore we want to pass it on where it will be accepted, where they will enjoy it 
as much as the Chihuly, which is an unusual piece, but I think this is a very important factor to give back to the community. They gave to us, it's our time to give back to them. And it all started with our husband, mm -hmm. mine oh. first, mm -hmm. who was collecting art when I first met him, and went on from there, and we had a tremendous interest, and I still do, in the arts, as well as Susie, and um, it blossomed, and people love to come to our home to see. The, it's a fun, very fun collection, and people love to come and see it because it's bright and cheery and um, a reflection of us. It really is. Can you each share one of your favorite pieces of your oh collection? My yes. Yes. Well, All of them. I think <laughs> you do. Right now we're fortunate to have some very interesting pieces. We have Dale Chihuly, we have Harvey Littleton, who started the glass movement and who I was fortunate enough to meet with my husband and son in the late, oh God, the early 70s and um, purchased our very first piece of glass. And this all started when we became friendly with a couple who had one of the most extensive glass collections in Milwaukee, the Barnett family. And I thank them for starting us on that trail. And we're, we're lucky to have as much as we do in our home that we hope to share with other people. I know our friends' children love to come in our house. They can play with it. They know what they can touch and not touch, and I think and they all love to come over and, and enjoy it because it. they enjoy they it. They do. Mm -hmm. Is it primarily glass pieces? Then? No, or? it's a mix of everything. There are, there's glass, there's sculpture, there's a lot of paint pictures on the walls. There's a lot of everything. Yeah, but it's cheery. It's very bright and colorful. It is not, you know, you don't walk in our house and, and find beiges or grays. It's a, a very colorful collection. She's that to describe the both of you yes, as very well. colorful. <laughs> yeah. um, I appreciate that we've gone back and shared a little more. I'm going to re-ask the same question. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you may think is insignificant, but when we go back and look at this, at this later, mm -hmm. um, that you think we should know? I don't think so. I no. think we've covered almost everything about our family, our immediate families extended families, and I think that gives an overall picture of what we've done in the community. And I agree, because there, it just goes on and on and on. We've done a, a tremendous amount of things. We're lucky that we've had that to, to do, and we keep doing it whenever mm -hmm. we can. We're always trying to um, enlarge our education too, or just to learn more and more. Every day is a learning experience. And I think that's so important. And, and, and that's what both of us do. We never stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you again. Yeah, I have just really enjoyed oh, this. Good. And I mean, you know, there's so much I didn't know. You. Oh, I'm sure. But you know, I, we literally grew up with your mother-in-law. I mean, she lived on Wildwood, we lived on Sheffield. Um, it's, you know, when now that I'm working on the 50th reunion, it's like, re, re, you know, reliving the past, mm -hmm. and of course having connections with a lot of people in the community. Mm -hmm. The things, I mean, I knew about the Chihuly, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize you were such art. Oh, um, yes. So. Yeah, well, this has been going on for a long, long time. It's Since fun. my actually brought you. you and her husband was, was, yeah, yeah, right. But I married later, so I started later. Well, yeah. and it's so funny where you say you married at 30, and mm -hmm. that's so old. I and, know. you know, but that's by that's today's not, standards, that's, that's so young. young. But when I, mean, I got married, I, I didn't was want married to get married. Five years yeah, ahead. she was ahead of me. I didn't want to get married. I loved what I was doing. I was in, couldn't have had a better job. I mean, I worked for the creme de la creme. And it was a great experience. It didn't make much money, but I didn't care. I lived at home till I got married. But my husband said, once I got married, that's the end of it. You can't work. So I've been doing volunteer work forever because it's a way of fulfilling myself, and I need that. It's very important to me. I understand. I mean, yeah, I know. The 20 you hours that I do, I mean, it's the mental health. health. It's my it's mental health. exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I get But I did it all along. I worked. Right. So, but you did volunteer work, too. I did too. volunteer work, and I also stayed in the profession because we, we were in it together, and um, it was an exciting time. It's a hard profession to be in. Um, yeah. But, yeah. 
it's gotten even worse now. But um, it was Did exciting. you do Mr. Bader the other day? I only got to start his, uh, his interview, and that was fascinating. But then, because, uh, yeah, I was supposed to go to lunch, and he, he came a little early, yeah. so it was it I was here. I was here. I was at the desk the other day, yeah. and he came. He's such a fascinating man. 